Recently, Bethesda announced that they were developing Fallout 4 before they started to develop Fallout New Vegas. And so that led to a lot of people asking questions about how video game companies keep up with technological innovations. And the answer is actually pretty simple. <laughs> There's a lot of development that isn't tied to technological growth. Uh, for instance, something like the Elder Scrolls games are really large, but being really large is really means that they have a lot of content. Uh, there are many assets, models, animations, sounds, but they get reused a lot. Uh, when you make the game, you don't make it at once. You make, say, a set of textures for walls or some wagons and some barrels and some flowers, etc. First things first, you need to do this in concept so that you have ideas of how all the areas are going to look. This is mocked up, it's not final. You do this for a big part of the world, the major parts. And you develop the major storyline, you develop the larger side stories, etc. Then before any actual work gets to be done on graphical assets, which are most likely going to change over time, certain targets get set as to how it's going to look, how much video memory is going to be needed, uh, what level of detail will degrade things, the view distance targeted, etc. In the meantime, a lot of stuff can get done without the assets being complete. Stories can be written, quests can be written, quests can be scripted, a lot of this can be done with placeholder data. The engine grows at the same time. For instance, the format and the editor for something like The Elder Scrolls 4 is very similar to The Elder Scrolls 3 and even Fallout 3. When you go to The Elder Scrolls 5, you see a bunch of stuff from Fallout still in the editor, like the VATS stuff. When you look at the editor for Fallout, you see a bunch of Bell stuff from The Elder Scrolls IV in it. So you spend time building the world. This is done on paper or as concept. In something like The Elder Scrolls, you already know what the world looks like. Uh, you build the stories, you write the dialogue. At some point, you have people come in and voice the dialogue. You build the stories, you test the stories. Uh, the Elder Scrolls games, for instance, have a pretty open scripting system that is pretty independent on the environment. Uh, it's mostly just built on waypoints and triggers, so you can put together quest lines even while the models for environment don't exist uh, if you wanted to. And afterwards, you just have to make sure there's not like no weird pathing issues that stop someone from going from point A to point B the way you expected them to. Uh, then there's people who design the regions, and they do it in such a way that the city is going to look best where the view distance is set at a minimum expected level. So for instance, you maybe want the player to open the gates and see the towering spires of the castle for maximum impact. You don't necessarily want them to open the gate and have the castle just a bit too far in the distance. Uh, when you're making the models, you make you try and target them so that they will look good on the hardware that you expect to see in the future. You might give the ability to lower the complexity of the models or the textures to accommodate lower end hardware, but you don't know exactly where it's going to sit. But that doesn't mean that you're stuck forever. I'll use The Elder Scrolls for an example because it's an example of a large scale game that takes a lot of time to complete. Everything in the game world except for the exterior terrain is a model. Many models are reasonably simple. A craze is going to be pretty simple regardless. A horse car is going to be pretty simple. Some things might need to be spruced up. Maybe a monster like a goblin is made early in the game's life cycle for testing, but three years later you might want something that looks better. You just rebuild the goblin, no big deal. You find something is featured recently prominently and it looks dated, you rebuild that. Then the engine can change apart from the assets. Uh, maybe new shader support is available, and you really think that this HDR bloom thing looks awesome, so you crank it up to 11 in The Elder Scrolls 4. Maybe there's a way to interpolate animations a bit nicer, and you work it to let it work with your existing animations. Uh, maybe you just crank up draw distance even further than you expected. The engine limitation isn't an asset limitation. For a lot of games like The Elder Scrolls, uh, there's a lot that is really more limited by engine than anything like assets. The big things that changed between generations of the Elder Scrolls games are things like the way faces were generated. Uh, any improvement over which, uh, of which over development happens game-wide. And a few ways that certain technical elements, particle effects, materials, and shaders can be used. Uh, many of these things weren't just new technology. Uh, they were just something that wasn't common at the time. For instance, Morrowind... Uh, didn't make much use of normal maps, but they did exist. Uh, video memory and capabilities were too limited to make use of them substantially, but the engine can actually support a limited amount of bump mapping as it is. Uh, players have been able to go back and add things like bump maps to the game. Now for the developers themselves, if they were developing Morrowind and video capabilities took a large leap forward and normal maps would have made the game look a lot better, they would have gone through and created them for all the existing assets. It would, it would be a large undertaking, but it wouldn't invalidate the old work done. 
But look at some of the things that players have done by themselves to change the look and feel of a game like Skyrim with barely touching the assets. Plugins that add additional shader options, add motion blur, or depth of field. The thing is that ultimately, if a uh, game is in development for four or five years, the content isn't all finalized in the first couple of years. A lot of work in the first years go is going to be planning and conceptual. Then when the assets are built, most of those assets are going to look good or as bad as the engine. The difference is when things are really technically tight, things like uh, first-person shooters or a fighting game or anything else with lots of close-ups and tightly controlled environments, those games will have different issues. In those situations, every scene might be tailor-made to take full advantage of certain hardware or work in very specific ways, but those games don't tend to take the same amount of development time. But it would be a reason why a game like Duke Nukem Forever would be severely impacted by changes to the engine. Games like Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim all use an evolution of the same engine. It's pretty general. It, it's used for expansive vistas and plug-and-play scenari uh, scenery. It can be beautiful, but it's beautiful in depth, not because every element is handcrafted. The same barrels and dust piles and books and chairs are rubber-stamped around the world. The big reason why a game like the Elder Scrolls game can survive a four- or five-year development cycle is because their appeal isn't because they've kept up with technological growth. Skyrim isn't a technological marvel, it's not ugly by any means, but for the detail of each individual object wasn't state-of-the-art when the game came out. The games are built to be impressive in terms of scale. This is why they need lots of development time. It's why you still see Skyrim stuff all over the place today, despite the fact that the game was released four years ago. It wasn't state-of-the-art then, it's not state-of-the-art now, but that's okay. The game doesn't need to be state-of-the-art to be impressive.